We previously introduced the concepts of the kernel and range of a linear transformation, and we saw how their generalizations of the null space and column space of a matrix, respectively. Link in the description to that video. Today, we'll continue this line of generalization. You may recall that we said the rank of a matrix is the dimension of its row space, which is the same as the dimension of its column space. Now, for linear transformations, the analog of the column space is the range. And accordingly, if the range of a linear transformation is finite dimensional, we call its dimension the rank of the linear transformation, denoted rank of t. Similarly, we call the dimension of the null space of a matrix its nullity, and the null space in the context of linear transformations is the kernel. And so we call the kernel's dimension, if it's finite dimensional, the nullity of the linear transformation, denoted like that, nullity of t. So once more, if the range of a linear transformation is finite dimensional, its dimension is called the rank, and if the kernel of a linear transformation is finite dimensional, its dimension is called the nullity. Now, we previously proved an important theorem on matrices called the dimension theorem, stating that if a matrix has n columns, then its rank plus its nullity is equal to n. That same theorem applies in this more general context of linear transformations. Here's a statement of that theorem in this more general context. Let t be a linear transformation from a finite dimensional vector space v to a vector space w. Then, the range of t will have to be finite dimensional, and the rank plus the nullity will equal the dimension of that domain vector space v. So for matrices, this right side of the equation was n, the number of columns, but in this case, it is the dimension of that domain vector space. And note that it's part of the statement of the theorem that the range of t is finite dimensional, so in proving the theorem, we would have to prove that, that the range is finite dimensional, but we certainly know that the kernel is finite dimensional, and so the nullity is defined. That's because it's part of the hypothesis of the theorem that the domain vector space V is finite dimensional. If the domain is finite dimensional, then the kernel, which we've previously proven is a subspace of the domain, that must also be finite dimensional. So we already know that's finite dimensional, and so certainly the nullity exists. But that's the dimension theorem for linear transformations. I'll leave a link in the description to the lesson where we prove this theorem, let's go ahead and look at a couple of simple examples of this theorem in action with rank and nullity of linear transformations. In this first example, we're considering the dilation operator with factor k equals 2 on the vector space of 2 by 2 matrices. So this takes a 2 by 2 matrix, multiplies it by 2, and that gives us a new 2 by 2 matrix. Just for example, if we put this matrix through the transformation, its entries are all doubled, and this is the resulting image. Clearly, the range of this transformation is the entire vector space of 2x2 two two matrices, because given any 2x2 two two matrix M, we could multiply it by one half, and then if we take that matrix and put it in the transformation, we would get M back out. Since the range of the transformation is that entire vector space, the rank of t, which is the dimension of the range, is equal to 4, because the dimension of the vector space of 2x2 two two matrices is equal to 4. Recall that the dimension of this space of 2x2 two two matrices comes down to the fact that each of these matrices has 4 entries, and so a basis for this vector space will have 4 matrices. Now the kernel of this transformation, the set of all vectors which map into 0, is of course just the set containing the zero matrix. If you double any non-zero matrix, you're not going to get the zero matrix. So the kernel only contains the zero matrix, hence the nullity of this transformation is zero. That's the dimension of the kernel. Thus, we see that the rank of the transformation, which is four, plus the nullity, which is zero, is equal to the dimension of the domain vector space, which is Four. In this second example, we may find it helpful to use the theorem in order to determine the range of this transformation. 
let t be the evaluation transformation at the sequence of points negative 1, 0, 1. So what this transformation does is takes any polynomial up to degree 2, because that's the domain, and then it outputs an ordered triple in r cubed by taking the input polynomial and plugging in negative 1 for the first component of the ordered triple, and then taking the input polynomial and plugging in 0 for the second component of the ordered triple, and then plugging in positive 1 for the third component. For example, the image of x squared plus 1 under this transformation ends up being the ordered triple 2, 1. Two. It's fairly easy to see that the kernel of this transformation consists only of the zero vector, and so the nullity of the transformation is equal to zero. We know that the kernel consists only of the zero vector because if there was some non-zero polynomial whose image under this transformation was the origin, zero, 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 which it would have to be to be in the kernel, if that was the case, then we'd have some polynomial of degree no more than 2, because the domain only contains polynomials up to degree 2. So we'd have a polynomial of degree no more than 2 that has three roots. Because if this polynomial was, say, p of x, and its image was the zero vector, which in this case is the origin, zero, 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 that would mean this polynomial has three roots. p of negative one would have to equal zero, and p of zero would have to equal zero, and p of one would have to equal zero. Because remember, we get the components by taking those points, negative one, zero, and one, and plugging them into the input polynomial. Since the only polynomials in the domain have degree no more than two, it's not possible for such a polynomial to have three roots. And so the only polynomial in the kernel of this transformation is zero. As for the range of this linear transformation, it's actually equal to r cubed. That's not necessarily obvious, but we can be sure of it by using the dimension theorem. Since the kernel contains only the zero vector, and so the nullity is equal to zero, it must be that zero plus the rank of this transformation is equal to the dimension of the domain. The dimension of the domain is 3. For example, its standard basis consists of 1 x and x squared. So, since the rank of our transformation has to be 3, the dimension of the domain, we know that the range of the transformation must be r cubed. This is because, as we've previously proven, the range is a subspace of the codomain. The codomain we know has a dimension of 3, r cubed has dimension 3. And the range we know has dimension 3 as well, because the rank is the dimension of the range. Since the range is a subspace of the codomain and has the same exact dimension, it must in fact equal the codomain. And so the range is the entire codomain r cubed. Once more, the logic there is that the range is a subspace of r cubed with the same dimension, and in such a case, the subspace must actually equal the whole space. So that's what the rank and nullity and the dimension theorem for linear transformations are. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and be sure to check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. If you find my videos helpful, please consider supporting what I do by joining Wrath of Math as a channel member. You can get early and exclusive access to additional videos and access to the lecture notes if you join at the premium tier or above. Thanks for watching.